lots of topics, of course, but uh, let's start with the fact that uh, nothing was founded more or less a decade ago now. So what kind of feelings and thoughts does that bring to you? I feel old, first off. <laughs> I f I'm starting to feel my age a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's such a loaded question. Um, you know, there's there's been so much that have, has come from from this this project for me um, originally kind of I leaned into this as a as a, a, a last ditch effort to kind of um, deal with deal with some stuff that I had internally that I didn't know how to deal with um, from from the previous decade um, you know from 99 to 2009 era um, you know I, I've kind of found myself in a lot of different issues and problems and and there was you know there was family and friends that passed on and you know there's obviously obviously the time that i spent um imprisoned for a little while um you know and, and you know there was things that that had happened before that that kind of uh negated that time and then there was also just the the time that i came home from that uh that you know, to the readjust myself into into a, a, a really strange new life uh, that had changed so drastically. Um, and, you know, I kind of just buried all of that. And, you know, I come from a place where it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's not really, you know, the, the thought of dealing with your feelings and your problems and your emotions aren't really, a, a, it's not a normal thing. It's, it's more of, get back, get back to it. And, and that's it, you know? So I did, that's what I did for a long time. And, 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 uh, it had lasting effects. So, you know, it, it started to break me apart after 10, you know, close to 10 years at that point. And, and, um, I had an epiphany that, you know, that the best, that the only way I've ever known how to kind of clear my head and get this, get the noise out of my head was always music, you know, and I had given up on it at that point. Um, as I, as I lost like a, a key member of music in my life, the person who had showed me guitar and everything. And, uh, you know, I played in bands with him in, in the hardcore days and stuff. And um, when he passed, I kind of gave that, that music idea up. But um, yeah, it was a last ditch effort, you know, to kind of put this thing together. And, and the goal was to kind of try to, you know, get everything out on the table and, and, and maybe that that would help um, like it had in the past of me to, kind of deal with it um which really wasn't quite the case immediately um but okay coming yeah coming back to uh today uh again well not the greatest of times at the moment either but uh the new album the great dismal is uh coming out end of this month and uh well everything is a bit different this time around. So let's just start from the creative process. Where did the inspirations for this album come from? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a perfect lineup. I mean, this is, this was, this, this was essentially it, what I just spoke of. It's, you know, I, I got to this point after Dance on the Blacktop and, and I, I hadn't felt like much had changed, to be honest. Um, I was still running rampant, you know, I was using, you know, fighting, uh, fighting problems with, with bigger problems, you know, and, uh, and I, and I still hadn't felt any sense of completion yet around this project and, and, and any kind of sense that, you know, f felt like truly therapeutic, you know, it, 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 and, and it was confusing and, uh, <clears throat> you know, dance on the tired of tomorrow to dance on the blacktop like same thing i you know i always thought that guilty of everything was going to be this record where i got that all out of my system and and that there a healing process would start um and it wasn't it, it that wasn't the case at all uh it just it was it was all lateral from that point you know it was great to get the creative stuff moving and, and help me silence a lot of the noise the outside noise but I, I i still i still hadn't you know i i brought a lot of things to light 
from that decade, but I didn't really address them, if that makes sense. Um, you know, it was essentially like moving down a hallway, kind of just like popping doors open and but just keep moving, not really looking what's inside each room, essentially. Um, so, you know, leaning in on this record was kind of, uh, it was a, it was a strange point for me. It was, it, it, I, I reached the crossroads of whether I wanted to put myself through the, you know, the task of doing this one more time with, with no real, with no real feeling of accomplishment, you know, um, at least not what I set out to do originally around this. So I, I had some personal problems as well as we all do. And, and, you know, I'm getting a little older, you know, as you said, I'm looking at the 10 year mark and wondering if I'm not wasting my time at this point. Um, and, you know, band, band changes, member changes again, which I've dealt with through this whole thing, but like, you know, uh, losing Brandon was a was a strange thing for us because we'd been apart we've been together for a minute and um, you know as as much as it's great to have Doyle into the picture you know uh, it was another it was another hurdle that that you know would, would kind of leans everything back on me even more you know um, and it, it was just kind of a it was a kind of a strange decision whether I was going to do this anymore um, but you know I started thinking about things and thinking about like how naive it was to kind of think how easy this this that task would be to just get everything done with the first album and move on like you know that what that's not the that wasn't the case and, and and i kind of started to realize like okay like all these like kind of misfortunes that have kind of led you to this exact moment like maybe this is what it's all about you know um and i probably was overthinking it and kind of talking myself up to like kind of get myself working but like it was enough to like push me forward and like kind of you know I've always I've always worked well worked the best when when my back's against the wall like that's when I perform best you know um you know like a I'm, I, I like float on the rock bottom you know like I I know how to bounce on the rock bottom I never hit it I bounce usually it's just like the one good trait that I've always had um and, uh, you know, I kind of looked at it as a challenge, I guess. And, um, you know, I kind of just hit the record button and, and started jumping into the Great Dismal pretty much right from that point on. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, some, uh, of course, some pretty heavy themes on the album. Like when exploring those, did you like reach any conclusions? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it, I I knew as the demos were coming together that I was on to something, you know. Um, I had a couple key things that I wanted to keep in my head, as and, and the two of them were, the two main ones were, you know, while I was fighting through, like, a lot of self-doubt and stuff, the, the two main things that I, I wanted to, to do was, one was I wanted to be honest with myself, which I, I feel like I hadn't really done yet. Um, there was a lot of ways for me to hide behind other people and, and, and hide behind, you know, visual and, and it's just, just a lot of hiding and not really ever being able to just stare myself in the mirror. So, so my, my main thing with this was that I wanted to be honest with myself and not worry about how that I come across and, and um, how press or people or listeners or anybody listens to this. It's just the first, the main thing was I just really wanted to finally be honest with myself. Um, you know, and then the next thing was that I, was, I didn't want to make a lateral move musically. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to let all things go, you know, and just kind of write this music while I had the, you know, the chance of, of being once again at the helm of like all writing, you know, the past couple records have been like split kind of pretty evenly between the band and stuff so like back again once again i just wanted to take this like by the steering wheel and just like drive this in the direction it needed to be and it was an important part of what this this whole thing was to be embodied by so um yeah with those two things in hand i just kind of just moved forward for sure yeah uh, you recorded the album uh, in quarantine. So what kind of experience that was for you? Because some bands have opted to, you know, go to their basement and record there. But uh, what was like your experience? Uh, 
<laughs> quite literally insanity, honestly. Um, I wasn't sure it was going to happen. You know, there, everyone, it, we, we were planning this in, in this December of the year prior. Um, and we had, we had Will like ready to go. He was into this, the demos and we were all ready to go. And we just noticed this, like, you know, we noticed that what was going on and it, it was moving over to your way in Europe. And we started to see it kind of like just ravaging through and, you know, we're looking at a March date um, and we were, you know, we were looking at late March and we pulled it earlier um, to the beginning of March because we, we kind of, it looked like it was coming, you know? Um, and we knew that if we, if we, if we committed to recording that, you know, if, if things, if things got as bad as they, they looked like they were gonna, you know, like, you know, we, we were looking at Italy and we were looking at Spain and, and things looked pretty bad. Um, we knew that if that happened in the States, that that would be it. We would, we would need to just stay there and, and for the full five weeks. Um, and uh, we, we committed to it and we went there in March, the beginning of March and, you know, everything was still pretty relaxed at that point. But uh, as, as we got into like mid March, it started to become pretty evident that it was going to be a problem here. And then a week after that, it was a problem here. And then a week after there, it was, it was, it was, it was in New York City where I live and my family is, it was the epicenter. Um, and, you know, we're, we're recording and we're writing and we're trying to stay focused on the record, but it's like, you know, the whole time there's this background uh, soundtrack, which is the news and um, of what's happening. And, hearing rumors and people newscasters saying that they were th talking about <clears throat> closing closing the bridges and the tunnels in new york city and you know i'm weighing my options at that point you know like am i being a bad you know am i being a bad friend and a bad family member not being being there in case things go really really bad because we at that point we didn't know you know like people were sheltering in place in Italy and, and, and it, it, like supermarkets were dead. And, you know, I have my family here and it was, it was really hard for me to decide whether all of us really hard to decide whether what we were doing was right being there or, 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 you know, being at home where we should be. And it was like a, it was a really philosophical kind of uh, conflict. Uh, it was just a strange thing to have intertwined with like writing a record. So, I mean, we stuck to it, you know, we, we had, we had strong support and everyone was kind of telling us like, just, just stay there, just get it done. Like, this is important. So like, with that said, you know, we, we, we finished it through and luckily no one got sick and everybody was okay for, from our immediate people. But like, you know, the, the world was unraveling and full in front of our eyes that whole time. So, yeah. Yeah. Lastly, of course, uh, for the album, it's coming out in the end of this month. So how is it to put out new music in a time like this? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's an awful time to release music right now for a musician, um, or an artist, um, or anyone involved in live music. Uh, you know, it, we live in a day where it's somehow in, in the, in the States, especially, I think is it's, we, 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 it's become acceptable to be, you know, that, that musicians of our size and bigger and smaller kind of, it's acceptable that, that, that the only way that you make money is, is live shows. Um, and I don't know how it got to that point where that's acceptable in the first case, but like, you know, it, it's been a problem, but this, this pandemic has been a, the microscope on top of that problem, which kind of brings the light that like, okay, now our musicians don't have, we don't have a, any kind of way to make our money. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 it's not just the, the money, the financial side of things, it's the creativity side of things. Like I, you know, I mentioned like, the, the, I know it's cliche to say, but like, you know, the creative, create, excuse me, the creative side of things is like how a lot of us deal with whatever's going on in the inside, you know, and, and it saved my life on numerous occasions. Um, so 
not having something to be creative towards and not having a financial means is, has been like a, a tragedy that hasn't even really um, unfolded completely yet. Um, we're, we're approaching a winter where, where things are very, very uncertain how things are going. I mean, it's bad over, over where you're at right now, but um, in Europe, but it's, it's bad everywhere. Um, I, I've uh, this, this year alone, I've lost like two good friends that are both musicians to to what can't be directly related to this quarantining, but I know that it it, it definitely played a part. Um, Riley Riley Gale, really close friend of mine, um, he was struggling, you know, openly struggling, um, and we lost him. Um, and then only a couple of weeks later, Wade Allison um, from Iron Age. Uh, you know, he was struggling for a while too, and 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 this this thing helped break hit him hit a breaking point. And you know, it's it's scary to see that kind of thing unfolding um, in front of us. And, and it's kind of it, it makes me really worrisome about the winter ahead of us. But um, yeah, I mean, I feel really lucky that 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 we managed to get this record done, and that I've had like this you know this time to spend like massaging this record and massaging every detail of this record and, and kind of just trying to present like a, you know, a, a, a non, non-traditional platform for, for the record. So it has like the proper amount of, you know, attention that I feel like it deserves, especially, you know, I don't look at this record like I started it in 2018. I look at this record like I started it in 2010, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, it's not it's not easy, but like you know, I I I, I look at it as, as though I'm lucky that to, that I had this to work on because I, again, I don't I don't it's hard to it's hard to be in this kind of scenario with with nowhere to put the creativity. So um, while it sucks, I'm 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 glad that we're able to to do this, and and also the the world needs music right now. A lot of people are holding out their records, and I'm not mad at that. Like a lot of people are holding out their records because they want to be able to tour off of it, you know? Um, and, and next year is probably going to be like a, there's going to be so many releases next year. It's going to be kind of like nauseating almost in a sense, but like, you know, we, not everybody was on the same side as me as wanting to get this record out this year, but you know, I, I, I thought it was important. Um, and, and, and I stand by that decision. Like there's a lot of people that, that, lean on lean on our music and you know uh and i i just wanted to i wanted to provide something for them too as well uh extending a bit uh from, to what you said that uh, like the bands of certain size like only survive nowadays because of live shows and that's what brings the butter to the bread and um I've been t I've been talking with a lot of uh, different sized bands and got a lot of different answers to the to a question that like from your point of view, um, what do you think? How will this pandemic affect the music industry as a whole? Uh, I mean it's 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 impossible to 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 fathom the 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 true sense of what it's going to do. Uh, I know that we're there's a lot of artists out there that are struggling that that have always been struggling. Um, and, and, and they might not be able to, you know, manage to, to get through this thing and, and, and take their shot at like putting together some music, which is really sad to think about, you know, like that, you know, there's people out there that could be like your next Prince or your, you know, your next whoever, who, who this, this affects, you know, there's so many different factors that affects that so much that we, you know, they might give up completely, you know, on, on, on making music, which is devastating in any, in any aspect, art, anything, you know, like it, people have jobs. I mean, people, people aren't working, people don't have money. You know, there's, there's not a lot of time for a lot of people who, who are juggling that and trying to, to put music together. It's already an uphill task as it is, even with, with a normal society, you know? Um, so that's, that's a little bit scary in general, but also, uh, you know, there's, there's only going to be a certain amount of people that are going to be able to 
are going to be able to, you know, keep themselves afloat during this thing. You know, I, I, I see people selling equipment nonstop now, like, you know, it's a luxury to be able to play music and to make art, you know, um, and, and, and it needs to be, it's, it's being treated like that for in a lot, in a lot of scenarios. So, uh, and I don't, I don't know. It's, it's not looking great, to be honest. It's, it's, it's a little, it's a little saddening for sure to see, see the direction. But the one good thing about art is it's, it's resilient. You know, art is, art is, is made to be resilient. So like, as long as, as long as, as long as there's, you know, a recording device, there's going to be music. As long as there's, you know, canvas, it's going to be painted. So. So, you know, art is one of the most resilient things that, that humans have ever come up with. And um, <clears throat> I think it'll prevail in, in the end, so. Yeah, the times are uncertain, but uh, do you have uh, any concrete plans uh, with the band after the album release? Is there something that's like absolutely going to happen or? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> we're taking it day by day. Um, we we try to make some plans, and they, they the the booking agents across the the world right now have one of the hardest jobs there are. Um, not only are they struggling financially as well, um, but they're the ones that are basically working for free at time at, at, during this time, setting up tours that eventually that are inevitably going to be canceled, and then moving them. And in the midst of doing this, there's you know, a million other booking agents doing the same thing. So it's just like the most insane, frustrating thing. And and my heart goes out to all the booking agents across the world that are dealing with this, as well as everybody in, the, in, in our in our ecosystem, you know, from venues to promoters, to booking agents, to the bands, to the audio people, to the stage hands, to, to everybody, you know, it's, it's, we're all in this together right now. And, um, you know, it, it, sh it should be known that, that at least, you know, that that's the case, that they're, they're not alone. No one's alone in this. We're all fighting through this together. So um, I know there's a million other problems going on, you know, corrupt government, you know, police violence everywhere, you know, a pandemic, um, the uh, half of our country's on fire right now the other half is drowning and flooding uh but you know it's important not to remember <clears throat> it's important not to forget that you know we we have a ecosystem of friends and peers and everyone sh you know should be thinking of it that way that, that no one's alone right now and that there's there's always someone dealing with what you're dealing with so you know i think that's important <laughs>